Brothers and sisters, good morning. good morning. I welcome you to this morning's Holy Eucharist. Today in the life of our church, we mark and celebrate the sixth Sunday after the season of Pentecost. We give God continued thanks, praise, and glory for his continued blessing and grace upon us. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the scripture readings. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and he set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. The word of the Lord.
reading from Paul's first letter to the Colossians. Jesus is the image of the invisible God and firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself <clears throat> is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in, in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things. Whether on, in heaven, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of his gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant, and according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to the saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord.
woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, St. John's. I'm sure this is a face you have not seen up here before. <laughs> and if you are taking copious notes, you will realize that my accent is not someone from Alabama, right? <laughs> All right, good. That was intentional. Uh, I am Father Ethan Ferguson, and I am an advanced degree student at the University of the South, the School of Theology, where David is. And of course, I've been asked to fill in for the day. Uh, so I will put in here a shameless plug. I am from the beautiful island nation of the Bahamas. Anyone ever been to the Bahamas? Oh, no. Oh, oh you, you are on your way to heaven already. Um, if you've been to the Bahamas, to get to heaven, you kind of have to cut, pass through the Bahamas. So you're on your way. You're on your way. Um, and so I am so happy to be here with you today. And for those who have not gone to the Bahamas as yet, put it on your bucket list, please. It is an absolute wonderful destination uh, to vacation. That's my shameless plug, that is over. And so thank you for having me today. Bow your heads as we pray. The grass withers and the flower whereof fades away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Words from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 41 and part of verse 42. Luke chapter 10 verses 41 and part of verse 42. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. The passage today from Luke forms for us one of the most important nuances of discipleship. That is simply that it is all inclusive and that Jesus invites and calls and beckons us to follow him. The art and craft of fellowship, as I call it, is not restricted and it is not based on class, color, or culture, nor is it based on gender, intelligence, or a specific ability. Rather, it is a call that bars through the optics of our perception, tradition, biases, and it says, come anyhow. It is a call, brothers, sisters, and friends, that liberates the seeker through the art of submission, to commit oneself to God and to follow God's leadership. The story then that forms the basis of the gospel today presents us with two sisters who are called to ministry within the same context. And what is that context? The context is simply that of God's presence. 
But we know that there is nothing simple about the presence of God at all. For Luke tells us that Jesus was visiting and in the spirit of hospitality, Martha's first impulse was to prepare food for Jesus. You see, in doing so, she continues in the Hebrew tradition of hospitality that began with Abraham, which we read in Genesis chapter 18, where he welcomed the three guests into his tent, and in which Sarah aided or facilitated serving the guests. But what Martha did not calculate was Mary's particular understanding of what the context required. Martha saw the opportunity to do what had always been done. And we are not criticizing Martha because she knew she did what she knew to do. She functioned in what she understood her ministry to be, and this was to make the guest Jesus comfortable and to prepare a meal for him. Remember now, meals in this context were a part of the cultural ritual. It was a way of showing honor and respect, which we know that Martha had for Jesus because even when she lost control and began to vent in the midst of her frustration, she refers to Jesus as Lord. But Martha's critical error was not what she did, but rather the spirit that superintended her doing. Luke tells us in verse 40 that Martha was distracted and that by the time she came venting to Jesus, Jesus says explicitly to her in the following verse, you are worried and distracted not by a few things but by many things. The challenge then was not what Martha was doing but the spirit with which she was doing it. And now she breaches her intent of hospitality by seemingly trying to pull Jesus into what on the surface looks like a family feud. It is then while putting Mary on the spot, she also accuses Jesus, who is the guest, of lacking concern and care over her self-created crisis. I can just imagine that while she was working, she was watching Mary. And the over-preoccupation with Mary's posture now undermines her own purpose and her own ministry. Her focus was on Mary rather than on Jesus. And that was her distraction. It means then that we must be careful, my brothers and sisters and friends. We must be very careful that our focus is on Jesus. I know this sounds basic and even cliche perhaps, but the question that we must ask ourselves is, is it possible to come to church and not come to Jesus? Is it possible to sing in the choir, no offense choir, and not sing for Jesus? Is it possible to serve around the altar and still not serve Jesus? Is it possible to be a member of the vestry and that which is most important to the heart of God is still not a priority to you? Is it possible then to still do church without regard and reverence for the Jesus who inspires us to be the church. Is this possible? Martha, through her devotion, challenges that possibility for us today. And she allows us to see what sometimes is ourselves through her. And that our busyness and preoccupation with everything else around us are the things that have us worried and distracted. But if we are honest and want to pacify and comfort ourselves, we, we can admit that we are distracted by good things, right? Good things like potlucks and coffee hour. We are distracted by good things like stewardship programs and social outreach and social justice initiatives by buildings and maintenances. We are 
We are distracted by good things. These are all important, brothers and sisters, and wonderful things. And if they are not done, there will be a definite malfunction in the life of the church. But the question is, while we are doing these things, is our focus still fixed on Jesus? Bishop Michael Curry, speaking about the Jesus movement, had this to say, every Episcopalian needs to know this Jesus of Nazareth. Every Episcopalian must undergo a reorientation of who Jesus is so that a Jesus people can emerge. A people who look and sound, walk and talk just like Jesus. On the other side, if we look at Mary, we see that Mary, unlike Martha, is sensitive to the moment. She reads the context, she assesses the atmosphere, and immediately she understands that upon the visit of Jesus, there is need of only one thing. Jesus' presence in their home for her was an invitation to discipleship. It was an invitation to follow him, to minister and to serve, but she needed to be first and foremost at his feet. This is why Mary breaks rank with tradition and the culturally prescribed boundaries of her day. Because despite what the culture said, she knew where she needed to be. We would be irresponsible, St. John, not to recognize that the culture is still speaking to us today. The culture is promoting rights over responsibilities. The culture is seeking to divide us under the titles of sexuality and gender, race and religion, conservative and liberal. The culture is speaking through lies and conspiracies that radicalize fear and promote violence. The culture is still speaking, telling us that it is ethnically and morally right for us to have more while others have none. The culture is still speaking, telling us that we must love to hate those that differ from us, ethnically or ideologically. It says that what divides us is more important than what unites us. The culture still speaks. But I love Mary because she courageously ignores what the culture is saying. And she pursues what she needs. And it is now more than ever that she has determined within herself she needs Jesus. She needs to be at his feet. And so she positions herself in a place of submission. Some would say surrender. And she listens to him. Maybe in this era of rhetoric and hyper-communication, words have become less valuable and listening has become more meaningful, more expressive, more telling, which is something that we can learn from Mary because if we read the gospel again, notice that she is silent in the entire text. She says nothing. Presbyterian pastor Reverend Cynthia Jarvis says, and I quote, to listen with humility is the only conceivable posture when in word and sacrament the kingdom of God draws near. The fact that Jesus was present meant that Mary could do nothing else but submit, surrender, and listen. Mary's posture, place, and position denotes the fact that she is actively listening. And that is listening with the intention to live and to obey, to serve, and to share, to love and to forgive, and to become a disciple in the truest sense of the word. Mary teaches us that sometimes in order to become effective listeners, our postures must change. Not our physical position, but perhaps the routine of our lives. Perhaps the relationships that we engage in, those that are unhealthy and not life-giving, perhaps our priorities 
must change. The things that are most important to us, because remember where our treasures are, there our hearts will be also. Our mindsets must change. Developing the mind of Christ helps us to adopt a sense of humility that allows us to learn and to grow and to change and to heal. It is clear then that Mary was seeking something more, something greater, something deeper, something transformative. And perhaps Mary was just tired of being busy. Are you tired today? And so it is at Jesus' feet that she finds rest and refreshment, joy and contentment, healing and deliverance, mercy and grace. Maybe this is what some of us experience when we come to church. It is during this hour that we divorce ourselves from the busyness of life and its expectations for us. And we find spiritual food, food for the soul. You see, contrary to popular belief, church is not intended to be a stressful and busy environment. It is partially purposed as an oasis in the desert of our life's experiences. It is here in the manifestation of God's unique presence that we are graced with gifts and strengths, power and the spirit to persevere and go on. This is why Jesus says point blank to Martha, she, Mary, has chosen the better part. Because the part that she has chosen is the prerequisite to the part for service. The part that she has chosen is the part that fuels her desire to love and to forgive and to be what God has called her to be in the world in which she lives. The part that God calls us to choose today is the part that must fuel the part of our service. This is the part that fuels our life and our perspectives. This is the part that keeps Jesus as the focus while we are doing everything that we can to serve him and to serve the world around us. I pray then for us today, St. John's, that God may help us to move from the busyness of religion to the intimacy of relationship. So that our ministry, whatever that ministry is, whatever we do to the honor and the glory of God may not cause us to become spiritually dizzy, but rather that our ministry may be rooted and grounded and birthed out of our posture before God and our understanding that there is need of only one thing. May God grant us the grace and the strength to recognize this and to do it. In his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, the historic formula of the church in which we as Christians declare we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made.
The prayers of the people of Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Glenda, our diocesan bishop, Chase and Sarah, our clergy, David, our seminarian, those discerning a call to holy orders, and especially Josh, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Joseph, our president, Kay, our governor, Tab, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. This morning, we pray for Will, Dennis, Elizabeth, Tony. Peter, Walt, Phil, Julia, Ellis, Alice, Dan, Stephen, Gretchen, Heidi, Carolyn, Paul, Karen, Jimmy, Leslie, Daryl, and Bonnie, and all people affected by the war in Ukraine. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. This morning, we remember Jack Irish and Malcolm Pyatt. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine on We pray you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray in the name of specials Chase and Sarah. We pray God's healing grace upon them. Father Chase, we pray for traveling mercies. Sincerely and together we pray, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. And we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Brothers, sisters, friends, having made peace with God, we now make peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share God's peace. Ah.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. John's. We're glad to have you with us today. If you're new or have been visiting or are back in the first time in a while, there are uh, contact cards in your pews that we invite you to fill out and place in the offering plate, and those will allow us to get in contact with you so that we can learn a little bit about you and you can learn a little bit about us. Uh, As Father Ethan said, Father Chase is out with COVID this week. We're hoping he will be back with us next week. Mother Sarah is on vacation. She's just fine. She's just deserving. She's just enjoying a well-deserved rest. Um, We do have a few announcements today. Um, Immediately after this service, um, there will be cookies and lemonade um, on the front lawn. So please stay and enjoy those. There will be a Daughters of the King meeting in the library. Um, So if you're interested in joining the Daughters of the King or you're a member, please join them. And then tonight at 5.30, there will be a movie and dinner for all of the kids and their family. And Sally has told me that there will be popcorn and hot dogs. So please come and enjoy that. Um, We are collecting both bottled water for the Kairos Prison Ministry, which is happening out of St. John's here shortly. And then also um, back to school backpack supplies for the FACES program. So if you're able to donate to either one of those, please bring those and leave them in the parish hall. Um, I think that's it. So are there any birthdays today? How old will you be? You're going to be turning eight. That's awesome. And so together we pray. Russell. You're turning eight too. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Any anniversaries this week? Come on down. How many years? How many years? Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made for yourself, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may be faithful, that we may be faithful in receiving this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. This we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we, the people of God, are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Josh, shed for you. The body of Christ broken 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 for you. Preserve your bodies and souls everlasting. broken for you, the body of Christ 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 broken for you, preserve your body and souls everlasting.
body of Christ. Yes. I was just waiting on you to show up. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 God bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you now and forever. The body of Christ broken for you. 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 Preserve your body and soul. Broken for you. <laughs> the body of Christ broken for you. 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 Is everybody in soul to be in Broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. them on the bottom, on the top, because if you put them on the bottom, what happens? <laughs>
And now in thanksgiving to God, we pray our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God who is almighty, the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Okay. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. 